All right, so why would you ever want to live in a vertical city? And when we're talking about vertical cities here, we're talking about cities of the future where you have buildings that are superstructures that are like 4,000 feet tall, as opposed to what you're seeing today. Like, you know, I think one of the tallest buildings today is around 1,200 feet up in the air. So vertical living becomes a really important proposition in the year 2050. Why? Because 2050, two thirds of us will live in cities. Well, okay, that's not such a big deal, right? Because already half of us live in cities. Why it's a big deal is because our population is going to explode by 30%. So 2050, 9.5 billion of us. Well, here's the deal. Right now, we consume a land mass of food and uh, meat about the size of South America, right? So in order to feed us right now, we need a land mass equal to South America. So you add about 30% to that, and what happens? You're running out of land, water is a big deal, that could become very scarce. Um, there are all sorts of, you know, day-to-day -day things that we take for granted that in 2050 may be a very different proposition. So what do you do? Okay, say that you have a closet at home, and all of a sudden it just, you know, you get 30% more clothes and shoes. What do you do? You go up, right? So that's the idea with vertical living, these mega cities. And in fact, uh, if you look at something like the uh, Bionic Tower, which is in Shanghai, this is set to be built or begin uh, building in 2015. And we're talking about a structure here that will house 100,000 people. So think about a, as a huge sort of terrarium with 12 different neighborhoods in them and each neighborhood has its own park and restaurants, and you could even have your dentist there, your physician. Basically, everything that you ever needed would be contained in this one structure. So again, why would we do that? Because we're running out of resources. So in 2050, what might it, might it look like if we're all living in these superstructures? I mean, it could be, on the one hand, really cool. You could have everything that you ever wanted at your disposal. You know, you could have every single restaurant in the world that you could, at your fingertips. You could have uh, your dentist there, your physician in the same building. You could work in the same building. In fact, your employer could subsidize your rent in that building if you were to live in it. So that's pretty cool. And there's the possibility that you could be born in that building and you could die in that building and you could never leave, which is kind of depressing, but it's a possibility. You're also looking at this sort of dystopian future where it's possible that all of a sudden it's not just people that are going up, but also agriculture. So on the one hand, you've got hydroponically grown fruits and vegetables, which would be really cool, and we're already seeing this in some buildings, and it can actually yield a lot of food for people. But on the other hand, if you've got, say, you know, vertical farming with cows, and you've got a 200-story high structure full of cows, you know that that's going to pose some problems. I mean, just consider the fact that a dairy farm with 2,400 cows can produce the kind of waste that a city of 400,000 people have. So, what does that create? That creates Poo Town, in my estimation, and I do not want to be downwind of Poo Town. And so what we're talking about here is a very real possibility that we have this sort of divide between the haves and the have-nots. People that are in these superstructures that have incredible views and have everything at their fingertips, and other people that are dealing with perhaps the, the you know, toiling at the bottom of these buildings, um, they're living in dwellings that are not being kept up, they don't have the same amenities. Uh, there are all sorts of questions that come up when we talk about how we structure a community based on architecture. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.